All righty. We are live. Happy National Scrapbook Day for those you can hear me. We'll give it a sec. See who is here. I don't know if Joy is here yet. I just need somebody to let me know that they can hear this okay. We are... Uh, Oh, there we go. Thank you, Pam. Um, so we are going to be working on an album to go into a new 3D project I have coming up, um, the Fairy Suitcase, which is a modification of my old vintage suitcase. But this week got a little crazy and I wasn't able to get it ready to go for today. So we're going to do the album that goes inside. <coughs> Excuse me. So and with that, we are modifying a really old, really old um, project from January of 2010 and turning it into um, more of a junk journal. And I'm really excited with how it is coming out. So other than Pam and Joy, do we have others here? <laughs> I don't want to get started too soon. So um, I did... Um, put up a video this earlier this morning um, showing how I assembled this new version so that way um, that way we can just work on embellishing um, for today so um, Excuse me. So Joy posted the Ustream link to this. We're on YouTube Live, dear. <laughs> All righty. So um, basically, just to, to refresh the memory, I don't have the original, original one. And I know there's at least another one or two around. But they are some of those really old samples I have boxed up. And I didn't give myself enough time to try to figure out where it was. Um, but I did have this one available um, that uses that. This is an old Graphic 45 one. I just got the cover done. This is where I played with some zipper stuff on the seam of it. And some zipper flowers. From This is from... And this one I know is from 2010 because it says so on the um the dangle so um but this this is one where i used um uh policy envelopes and so this this they're asymmetrically scored and the narrower part is attached to the one um either before it or after it because it can go this way or the envelopes can go this way it really doesn't matter which way um, with the policy envelopes, it has a flap, just like the, the six by nines we've been using. <coughs> um, but then they attach to each other. So what we're doing this time with today's project um, is this one is the same size envelope. So one that where I'm actually doing for inside the fairy house or inside the fairy suitcase is um, larger. Um, but this uses those same size envelopes. So same sort of thing. The large part of the envelope and my pocket goes up to here because this is a tag into it. So that's the envelope. But what I've done is at that um, joint, I've added some other papers and such to give it more of that junk journal feel. Um, this one I'm just getting, I got all the paper matting done because I did this one in a traditional way of where I've matted it. Um, though some of the papers in there were actually the pattern papers. Um, I just haven't gone through and put additional embellishments. So at this point it's just, um, it's just all matted, but, and I'm just starting to add little things in to pockets and stuff. So, um, but you can do this totally um, just like I've got shown here, um, very traditionally where I've just matted 
um, the different papers and it's got some kind of ricey paper. This is the pattern paper itself used as pages. Um, here is some craft paper. Um, so, you know, pretty much in a junk journal, kind of anything goes that you want to put into it. I, um, I don't profess to be a expert on junk journals. Um, I know they're becoming very popular. Um, <laughs> and I have fun doing them. Um, it's a kind of a very different kind of thing. Um, now this one, I only put a back panel on it. I didn't put a front cover on it. Um, I decided to leave it um, this way, but you could add whether it's chipboard covers or um, fabric or a combination of both. It's kind of whatever, whatever you want to do goes. Um, but there are a million YouTube videos out on doing junk journals. So um, if you're interested in, in learning more about junk journals, um, there's, there's a lot of resources out there. Now this one I've done using just little coin envelopes. And I got a little piece of canvas between two tags as my cover. So that opens up and lays flat. And then I just use these little coin envelopes. Now I haven't, <laughs> I haven't put my little extra pages in and I'm going to hand stitch those in. Excuse me. Like, um, this one I just showed you, I hand stitched those in and I use Baker's twine to stitch them in the one we're going to work on today. I use my mach sewing machine to put them in. Um, and this one I'll probably just hand stitch them in, but it, it, it gives me, um, the little pocket of the coin envelope and then the little pocket for some little tags. So you can make, you know, just a teeny tiny little guy. And like I said, I'm going to use my, um, adding machine tape. As soon as I figure out where I put it, <laughs> I would have done it since I did the video. <coughs> Cause I opened it up and went, Oh, nuts. I forgot to put the pages in there. Um, when I was doing the video earlier. So, but I have to find my adding machine tape and I don't know where I put it. So, um, but I'll put some little in there and I want to, I'll probably end up decorating this mainly with washi tape. So once I have it done, um, I'll show you guys. So, but, um, fun to do sometimes these little super teensy ones and it fits in one of these, um, the Tim Holtz, um, tins so kind of a fun thing to do um so now this is the one i assembled this together um on the video that i posted earlier um and again just like i did with the the little one i have um canvas at my um um spines now you could make these chipboard and i'm using cardboard but again you can use um, chipboard just because on the suitcase um, I'm using some cardboard also on the suitcase so this fit with it and I allowed myself a two inch spine with the thickness of how this all comes out together as a signature because it's pretty fat already and I haven't put all the rest of the stuff in there so I'm using six by nine uh, manila envelopes and then I've got some gridded paper um, this is some mixed media paper and this has got a little pocket for it to put some tags in, um, some craft. Here's some, um, rice paper that, that I've then stitched on to the craft. Um, some, um, page from a book. Here's, um, a junk envelope. This is literally, um, it came in, um, as part of the mail. It's got the little windows in it. And then there's a tag here that I've also stitched a little coin envelope um, onto half of the tag. And I've left all the strings and stuff because I don't know what I want to do with them yet. So the other half of the envelope and then it just reverses again. Um, rice paper sewn on there with another little pocket. And then I've got this pocket here. And it's essentially the same. I did the same elements. In each of the three sections, I just use them differently. For instance, the rice paper I've stitched to um, the craft paper. 
just close to the edge so it's not actually in the seam where it's attaching. Again, another little pocket, the grid paper, the tag, junk envelope, book page, and again, another little um, coin envelope that I stitched onto the envelope. Same with this one, I stitched it on there. And then my craft. And this one, I just stitched it up on the top quarter because I can open it up and fold. The little pocket. The envelope. This one has a big, huge um, window on it on both sides. So I have the window on both sides. Stitched this, folded the um, grid paper over and stitched my uh, coin envelope on again with my machine. And this one's just stitched it kind of out in the middle, opened up. And then the pocket. So it's essentially three large envelopes and then everything else stitched in. And then as I showed in the, the video that I posted this morning, I showed you how to attach the three together. And by having the attachment allowing half an inch, the signatures are essentially attached to each other, but has the same look as if you know they weren't. Um, and that half an inch gives them that, as I've always called it over the years, breathing room. So it allows for the expansion. So, and then the very back is attached to my back cover. So you can use pretty much any size envelope that you want. Um, as you see, I use tiny little coin envelopes. I use number 10 standard envelopes. Uh, I've used number 10 uh, policy envelopes. These are six by nine. You could do it with the nine by 12 if you wanted to. You just have to kind of judge when you're scoring for this pocket on the back, what size you want it to be. But you can then tweak it to whatever you want to do with this. Um, and however many pages you're comfortable putting in each of your signatures. Um, I tend to like not more than five or six layers. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I've got six layers. Um, but five or six is my typical if I'm doing a junk journal, just because it just gets too fat otherwise. Also, I've only put three signatures in. You can do as many signatures if you want. So if you want it wider, you can you can do um, additional signatures. So even with this one, for instance, if I get it all filled up and this is still super loosey goosey, um, I may add another signature just to take up some of the space. Um, if it doesn't get um, thicker like, like I'm expecting it to. <coughs> Does that uh, make sense to everybody so far? All right, I was just trying to catch up. You guys are all just chatting. <laughs> all righty. So, um, oh, another one that I've got underway as well is using some of my um, um, echo dyed papers. And again, it's just all using all sorts of different echo dyed stuff. So it's going to have tag. Here's an envelope in there. Now, one of the things I did on this, and this one's not all attached yet, is I had some vintage papers from uh, papers from vintage books that I've done in the echo dye. Well, one of the things, and I, they probably were this way before um, they went in through the tea dye bath, um, is they became very brittle when I folded them. So what I've just done is I've taken um, some piece of just really um, rough type of fabric. And I've glued that over that folded joint just to, because it's fine if it stays flat. It's when I folded this paper that it, it just got very brittle. So, um, but I just stack these different layers, just line them up on the fold. Place them where you want to place them. 
in the order which you want them to be. And then um, you could just stitch them. Like I said, you can stitch it by machine or you can stitch by hand. This nifty tool that We Are Memory Keeps Keepers has come out with uh, for piercing the holes to stitch. This is an awesome little tool. Um, you can also get the book binder thing that comes down at a V shape and you can and you can do the holes. But for this kind of thing, because this binding method is has um, it's an ancient way of binding that has made a big resurgence. As I I laughingly said on one of the videos um, that you know I've over the past 11, 12 years, I've come up with like 40 different bindings for, for mini albums and stuff. <laughs> and, and we're now back to where we're stitching our books together again. So <coughs> I find it's rather funny. <coughs> yeah, Joy, I've been using it. I love it. That tool. It's, it's cool. Um, Christine, if you're having issues, the other thing you might want to try is switching out your needle. Um, she's having troubles with attention on her sewing machine and just getting loops, but you might want to try out your, uh, change out your needle too. I'm not going back to binding rings now. So, but, um, yeah, so this is another one that I'm going to be putting together and, um, this one's going to definitely be much more mixed media. Um, this one, I'm going to kind of do a hybrid of um, a mixed media and a um, pattern paper. Um, I'm actually, I don't have this one up yet, and I'm I will try to have it up this weekend. Um, but I'm going to be using um, this one because it has kind of a mixed media feel. This is my lightest paper again. I don't have it up just yet, but um, I will work on getting it up um, this weekend. So, um, but it has a feel. What I was aiming for was much more of a mixed media kind of look and feel to the papers. And we'll do you know, kind of a hybrid. If you plan on whenever you're printing out papers and using an inkjet printer, um, as I've talked about on other videos, you do want to do some sort of, um, and you're planning to use any wet media over the top of them. If it's an inkjet printer, the, your, your ink, if you use very wet media, it will transfer to it or it will basically just um, uh, watercolor away. So you do need to seal it. You can use like um, Aquanet hairspray, <laughs> or you can just get a workable fixative sealer that you spray on the papers um, before you put any kind of wet media. I some, especially if I'm just stenciling it over it, I don't, I don't worry too much about um, um, sealing it. And then I, because I also like being able to just spray it on occasion, and it'll act kind of like. Um, uh, distress inks and stuff is it'll kind of splotch up so it adds to that character um with it but um if you're planning to do like any kind of wash over the top of it or something like that you definitely want to seal it first um if you have an ancient printer if you're getting things printed like on a color copier or with a color laser printer um you won't have that same problem but with um an inkjet the inks will um, be affected by water if you're doing wet wet media and that these are the ones that don't have the floral stuff on them so this will kind of fit right in and it also kind of gives me a palette um, if I'm planning to do some, which I am, um, some stenciling or color stuff on top. Because it's mainly kind of the blues, greens, yellows with a little bit of pink. So, um, you know, it's kind of, here's the palette between those two pages. So a lot of the kind of 
uh, dusty blue and green, some pops of, of the yellow and um, the pinks in there. So that's kind of the palette. There's another one that's just kind of a color combination. So that's the kind of color palette I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use some of these. Um, I've also pulled out a couple others that they're just in my stash. I don't recall how old they are. these are, but these are some basil, basil ones that are just your base. These are perfect for collaging. If you're a, a pack rat of all, at all of your stash, <laughs> the uh, doing much more mixed media-esque type projects is perfect for you. Um, I do want to comment um, on that in that over the years, you know, mixed media has become super, it's kind of the super popular paper crafting kind of thing. Um, ha always has been, but it's much more mainstream now and not more of a kind of a different genre. It's really taking over paper crafting um, greatly nowadays. Um, but uh, for the years, the projects that we've done, especially the albums, have been mixed media. So don't panic at the thought of, oh my goodness, it's something all completely 100% new that we've never done. Um, no, we have. <laughs> A lot of the projects that we have done over the years have been mixed media. You can do any level of artsy fartsiness that you want to your projects that you want. You can keep it very um, uh, traditional, like I did on this one, or you can subtly add a few things like some stencils in, that sort of thing. You don't have to go out and buy a million dollars worth of uh, fine art, paints, materials, all that kind of stuff. Use what you have. If you're like many of us in paper crafting over the years, you've managed to define stuff. And also in the beginning, especially, you can use inexpensive things of paint. These you can get as low as 99 cents for these little bottles of the, the acrylic paints. You can get student grade cake um, uh, watercolors that work perfectly great for this sort of thing. Unless you're wanting to be a professional watercolor artist, you don't need the super expensive stuff. Same with, with the um, uh, acrylic paints. Um, you know, go with what colors you like in the price that you can afford is basically where I'm at. Um, you probably just want some gesso. I recommend white and black, it's relatively cheap. And some matte medium. And maybe some gloss medium if you want that, but the matte medium um, for attaching things. Beyond that, it's you, there's all sorts of different kinds of different kinds of mediums um, and textures and all that kind of thing that you can can get. And then some stencils and there's this is a squillion and two different stencils. Tim Holtz has stencils. Um, Stencil Girl, those are much more the artistic style uh, is with with the stencil girl stencils um the the crafters workshop stencils uh, they have both traditional and they have a lot of mandala type stuff and so they've got some really cool ones as well um let's see those are the main ones but oh everybody and their brother has stencils out um and that sort of thing so you know um go with what you like. <laughs> so um, I just got a set. I don't remember whose they are. I hope it says on them. Just got some little ones with the go. Well, where are they? Oh, here they are. I just got mixed up in a set. This is a nifty little set, and I wish I knew whose it was because I just got them and I don't have the packaging anymore. I can't believe they don't put something on their stencils. 
I don't know who these are. I, I'm terrible. But they're, they have this little tabby thing at the top. But this is perfect for like um, journaling type things because they're small. So those are nifty ones. But anyway, um, also like Stencil Girl has a club and it's 25 bucks a month and you get three, a large, a medium and a small stencil every month. I belong to it. It, it gets me stencils that there's no way I would have bought picked out and bought and then they turn out to be my favorite so all sorts of of options available um again coming back to the paper um this is an old american crafts this is, you know this is a great way to use up your stash this is from 2013 and it's got um oops it's a across the room just some basic stuff in here so look through your stash see what you've got what map was that It's New York, Manhattan. Um, so, you know, look for, the, you know, stuff that you like. Um, I now save everything. <laughs> this is just a, um, this is an envelope. Got beaten up a little bit, but I'm say I save everything now. And, you know, if you are a pack rat, this is, this is some cool, this is tissue that came in an Ikea thing. And it's different than tissue. It's a little bit more opaque, but, opaque, but it's like the thickness of tissue. So this will be fun to do some stuff on. So I got that out. And then um, at the grocery store, when I bought some flowers, it has this tissue around them that's it's kind of got a stripe to it. And I love it. So I say that. <laughs> so... Um, you know, then, then there's patterned um, scrapbook paper. This is a graphic 45 one that's got these cool this cool grid on it. So I saved those. Um, then I've also, I, I printed out some tab things from one of my other paper collections. Um, last night I was, I almost tossed these out because this is what I use. I used the back. This was one of the, the embellishment packs that went with the paper collection I was using from, you know, from this was Butterfly Gardens from Pink Paisley. This is from like 2012 or something like that. But I used the packaging back because it was printed for the back um, of the, the album or the book. But I love these things because I thought these things were so cute. They'd be cute on the tops of tags or something. Also, my, the little Tim Holtz tickets things. 99% of the time I've tossed these. Well, these will make cute little tabs that you can attach on. So, um, you know, making junk journals will turn you into a complete and total um, pack rat hoarder. <laughs> so um, don't say I didn't warn you. So, but you can use anything. There's pretty much just anything that now this isn't glassine it's like a craft paper it's kind of it's heavier than tissue but lighter than paper bag it's real crinkly it's kind of shiny on one side it's not waxy at all so it's not like a wax paper so i don't know it's just and the only place i've seen it is on the flowers so but it's, like I said, shiny on one side and matte on the other. <coughs> but, um, it's, um, you know, anything, like I said, getting stuff out of the mail. This is literally, um, an envelope, um, out of the mail. So. Well, 90% of the places, it is boring clear cellophane. But um, at the grocery store near my house, see, it's got this hole in the middle. And so it's still got the clear cellophane in it, too. But this is like right around the flowers. And then they got this clear cellophane, too. So I've got three or four of these because I keep them. You know, my my kids and my husband are, they all just kind of 
roll their eyes when I want to keep some of that stuff. So. Oh, you guys are back to on the talking about the we are memory keepers tool. Excuse me. It's um as a tool it, in this this end, and I've showed this on a previous video. This is what would typically be in book binding, is what is called a cradle, and they're usually larger. And they come down to a V. It's two pieces of wood that come to a V that are held up. And you set your pages in there so they all nest in right at the fold. So this has got a really slight little V shape cradling thing. Um, this is also, if you're doing some stop binding, which is where the stitching comes, you know, into, <laughs> onto the cover. So if I were, if this were, um, the spine and it was made like a more rigid spine. Many times you have some stitching, different kinds of ways of stitching that go onto the cover as well. And that's what these are for here. Um, but what's nice is then this, you put your papers in there. So it's like this one, let me grab these. So I would take and put all the pieces, I'd line them up on my little fold. In whatever order you want them, placement you want them, that sort of thing. I always try to fold them up a little bit and then kind of nest it back in there. Make sure it's Everybody's all lined up the way they want to be. Okay, so it's all set kind of in that little ditch. And this piece goes on the top. And it comes with a piercing tool, but I have a, a nicer piercing tool. <laughs> Um, and then you can just punch the holes in it. Um, I've marked and like just like I did on um, the score tool, I marked the center hole on here with a sharpie marker so that I can center. And typically, I would center it, and then I can I can pierce whatever holes that I want to pierce um, to stitch it. So what I did on this one, it was all of the holes that had the circles on it. So it was every other one. And that gives a half an inch separation of them. Now I did that on this one, I did a pair that I tied together, four pairs of holes that I tied together, but you could also just do a running stitch down the length of them. <coughs> Again, there's all sorts of fancy things. <coughs> Excuse me. There's all sorts of fancy things in terms of the stitching. Um, there's a million and two options of stitch bindings of things that you can do. But yeah, marking that center is definitely, um, you know, it's very much, um, it, and it's, I find it funny. It's it's like mar marking, it's all faded on here, but marking that. I remember when I did that the very first time, and then it's been always so funny over the years to watch how pretty much everybody has it marked now. <laughs> so, um, but uh, this is definitely a nifty tool. You can always use a coupon <laughs> too. So. But it comes with this, and then it comes with, it has a little pouch. So it comes with a piercing tool. It actually comes with some wax thread um, and some needles. The curved needle on some things that are hard to stitch through, it gives you something to get a grip. So um, the curved needle is kind of nice to have. So, but it has some wax thread needles. Fits in this. Oh, it's in there. some of the tool in here too. Oh no, it's not a tool. And then it has your instruction booklet. So, but it gives you, you know, ways of how you can stitch it, how you can use the, 
how to use it. Oh, these are the different kinds of stitchings that go onto the cover, like I was talking about. That's what these three lines of stitching are over there. It's for more of a, a matchbook type of uh, style. So, but it has the piercing tool. But like I said, I like to use the one I've got. So. So <laughs> worth the investment um, if if you are thinking of doing any kind of that that kind of binding um, for making those signature type things. So anyway, all right, so we can get back to this. I love how it just kind of pops open too. It's kind of fun. But like I said, I have a um the cardboard on the cover and I'm going to wait on doing the covers so I can just kind of tuck and wrap those around. Now I'm going to be using kind of, you know, some paint be a little bit messy. Um, I have been finding, I don't know if any of you who follow me on Instagram have been following how <coughs> other than this morning, <coughs> excuse me. Let me have to drink my water here. Allergies are really bad this year, but, um, um, I've been doing a lot of art journal stuff over on my Instagram account. Um, just because I'm, it's been, as many of you know, the past couple of years, it's been a struggle for me getting my creativity re jump started. I just went through massive burnout. <laughs> um, and so getting it restarted has been interesting, but I think this journaling has done more for me than anything. It's getting myself into a routine of doing it. Um, I'm doing it mainly for me. It's not necessarily that I'm doing it because that's, I, I know I've had a few people freak out and go, Oh my goodness, are you not doing, a, you know, 3d or journal or, mini albums or any of that kind of stuff. Are you just going to do art journaling? And it's like, no, not necessarily, but I'm doing the art journaling more for myself. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I'm forcing myself to do that each day and it's, I'm spending 15 minutes to half an hour on the stuff that I'm doing. Um, and it's been just a total blast. I didn't get to it this morning, so I'll do it this evening. Um, just because I was working on, excuse me, stuff for this. Um, but um, now I'm showing it, but I've done journaling in the past, but I don't always show them. Um, but this one, I'm pushing myself that no matter what it looks like, I'm going to show it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be earth stopping. Um, it just, I'm just doing it because I want to. Um, and it's been wonderfully fun and wonderfully freeing. And I'm really trying to push myself to be a lot more with some of them, um, to be much more loose and not be so structured in terms of my style and such. Um, just because I think it's the architect in me and stuff that I'm always wanting things very somewhat structured. Um, so I'm just trying to be much more, I guess serendipitous is the word um, to use. And so that's, that's why I'm I'm looking forward to doing this one with a little bit um, kind of a hybrid serendipity. Um, this one doing with the echo dyed stuff, man, this one's going to be full blown. Um, I'm not going to really use much in the way of paper other than collaging stuff and paint and stuff. So bye, Sophie. I'm glad you're able to join us. Already left and I didn't see it. So anyway, um, so we can go ahead and get started. Now, when I stitched everything on, I just left my threads hanging and I'll trim them as I choose to or decide to on them. Now, um, everybody goes about how they embellish their um, junk journals whether you want to flip everything and start here and go through the pages or you start in the middle and then work towards <laughs> the main page or the back pages. 
Um, one thing when you sew something with the um, sewing machine, it's almost like it's a perforation um, with your stitch. You want to lengthen your stitch length a little bit, which I didn't do on this, but I can see with this tag going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, it's already starting to get ready to where it's going to want to just, if I wouldn't have to pull very hard for it to want to tear out. So it's, it's like perforating on um, paper. So I will probably go ahead and put some um, uh, washi tape or something on both sides here just to give it some um, some extra. <laughs> um, it also depends on the paper. You know, these are our cardstock um, weight tags. So they're a little heavier than, for instance, the envelope and the paper doesn't seem to be as impacted by the perforation. Um, whereas this, this mixed media paper, I'm going to put some tape on that because this one's already starting to tear, I see as well. So if you are using your sewing machine, a couple things to remember, lengthen your stitch length. So it's not perforating quite so tight. Um, some machines you may need to mess with your tension a little bit, but, um, as a long time, um, sewer machine sewer, I try not to mess with my tension. There's usually a lot of other things that you can do before touching your tension because getting your tension back to normal again is a challenge. Also, if you still sew a lot on fabric, after you've sewn on paper, change your needle. Paper dulls sewing machine needles very, very quickly. In fact, I get to the, I've, I, I'm at the point where I will take my fabric machine needle out and then I have my paper needles and then I'll switch them back and forth. Um, mark them somehow with it, whether it's with like a Sharpie marker or something up on the shaft. Um, but it's the same as with um, um, blades. Um, you don't want to go from sewing paper back to sewing fabric with the same needle. It, it really dulls the needle down and then you'll run into to heavy you'll have more issues sewing on fabric with a needle that's been sewing in paper so so hopefully um that helps those of you who do have sewing machines and want to use them on paper you can you can get an inexpensive sewing machine um very especially used ones inexpensively you don't need a super fancy computerized machine uh to sew on paper so you can you can uh, get away with doing something pretty inexpensively um, so anyway all right just watching my hands flop around and my book flop around is not what you're here for you so let's go ahead and and um get started um this is always the hardest part for any of us i have a blank book ready to go now it's like, <gasps> now what? So, um, but it also depends on, you know, the kind of style. If it, the, it's much easier to start one with pattern paper than it is to start one blank page with um, yeah, with scissors is the other one too, Pam is saying in terms of fabric and, and paper. So, all right, so why don't we start out with maybe something that I want to be up here towards the front. Um, you know, I can put at least some pattern paper on there. I can collage something on. It just depends on the kind of... Um, it's just... And I'm also going to have some tags. That's why I don't have the paper up yet. I have the tags and stuff that I still need to make to go with that paper collection. So let's just grab some of this other stuff. Uh, the other thing that my my hoarding thing is, is I keep all my leftover bits. I mean, even when I trimmed the envelopes off, I've kept those. Because I thought they kind of were cool is if you tied them all together and you could you know there's yeah <laughs> the brain is crazy 
so I just keep all my leftover bits from other projects. We got stuff that, you know, is left over from stencil. Oh, that's the other big thing to use. I highly recommend. You can just get one of these. This Hobby Lobby, 15 bucks, um, is a, a jelly a jelly press. Um, you can get just one of these little tiny guys. Awesome. And you can just, inexpensive, you can just, you can use um, just a roll of paper. I have a roll of paper that I got at Ikea that was $4.99 that's like, goes on forever. You can just print onto inexpensive papers, um, get some mixed media papers, do it on those. Um, but lighter weight, I tend to like. A lot of people use deli paper, which you can get off of Amazon, that kind of thing. But using your jelly press to print some papers up yourself. Awesome. It's an awesome um, tool to use. So here I have some handmade papers, um, tea bag, <coughs> printed papers. Here's some um, kind of ugly stuff that I did on the gel press at one point, but I saved them and then I can use just little bits and pieces of some color stuff. Um, there's a stitch in there that's not supposed to be in there, but this is just where I keep all sorts of tiny little pieces because you never know when you're going to want something that shape. So like I said, I'm going to turn you all into hoarders. Um, so don't hate me. <laughs> All right. So um, my comfort level is not necessarily starting here. I like starting kind of here in the middle and going out from there. So I do need to get some tape out, which is underneath <laughs> my... Stuff that I just stacked on the side, so let's grab. Let's take the top off here for a second. Um, so the palette is greens, blues, little pink. It's a new one I just got. It was part of the set. Ooh, I like this one too. Let's do that one. It's less boring. Um, but where this is starting to come apart a little bit. So. Oops, sounds like my husband's home from golf. Sometimes getting him started is tricky. <laughs> so I'm about so I want it that long ish. And this is this is a, the best tip I ever had when it came to washi tape is glue it. I never liked washi tape because it wouldn't stay stuck. Then I took a Seth after class and he glues it and it was like, well, like, um, duh. <laughs> I felt really dumb after that. It was like, oh, why did I ever think of that? Because my issue was it wouldn't stick. And so, hello, glue it down. <laughs> I just feel like I'm off camera constantly. Let me see if I can get this to tip. I don't want you necessarily there. So, oh, I need some new lights though. That, and that's my next investment is to get some more lights. All right, so I like. I think I'm gonna put some on the back side too.
I think why I'm enjoying this kind of stuff is I'm I'm trying to do stuff to where I don't think as much and I just kind of feel you know I don't want to sound all you know woo woo but it's it's more like one of the things is is just getting to the point where you trust yourself when your brain says yeah no I like that one um is going with that go with what your brain says yes to and not necessarily what you then have an internal argument with yourself as to whether or not that's the look that you want or not just kind of go with the flow so So I feel much better now. Oops, I gotta turn that off. Stuck out it just a little bit. Um, now I don't feel like my my tag's gonna suddenly pop out of there. So now I'm not a big long strings kind of girl, but I don't mind the strings being a little bit. So I'll slowly give this thing a haircut over the course of making the project but sometimes I want them to be longer so that's why I leave them long until I'm actually um, working so um, so you can always like I said reinforce things which is tearing and with this one it's the, the craft paper oh it's this see it's already popped out so we'll, when we get back to that one, I'll do the same sort of thing with some washi tape back there, whether I use the same color or not, I don't know. So now with this envelope, I don't necessarily like the blue that's back behind there. So I can always put something back in um, behind there. I, and also I might do this a little bit of paint on, um, here just to give it a little bit of color probably some water so let's pull that out this has got pastel colors in it and i like the bluey green so let's do that this isn't <laughs> this isn't crystal clear water because i was using it the other day but it's close enough for what i want to do so, and I just want some of this kind of aqua color. I don't need a lot. But I just want to give it a little wash. You can use inks for this too. You don't have to use watercolor. You could use um, one of the things I do want to do. Because I tend to forget and leave my cutting mat up here. And then I pop my heat tool out. I don't want to melt it. It just needs a whole lot more color in it. Because it's not putting any color in. There we go. And it's going to beat up on the window part Back so I can wipe off the glassine window. But, you know, I used to carefully ink all my edges and do all of that. And I'm less inclined to do that stuff as much anymore. So let's do this little blue on the edge. Um, I want kind of that brownish edge. I can just add. I'm 
Just kind of give us it. And then I can paint it or paint, dry it. So, but um, it's a little bit more loose. <coughs> and less. Um... Now, I also, <coughs> excuse me, wax paper, or not wax paper, um, freezer paper. It's got a shiny side to it. If you take that and put the shiny side down, or the shiny side up underneath. That way if anything drips. Oh, the glass seam melts. Oh, hello. Good to know. Hello. Okay, well. We that wasn't glassine. That's plastic. That's interesting. Okay, so we're gonna have to do major surgery. <laughs> I'll just put new glassine behind it, but yeah, no, that's, those are inexpensive. So that's plastic. So let's see, we're just gonna, and we'll refix this, these edges after I pull the plastic off and put some glassine behind it. Okay. Always fun. All the other windows I've used have had a, kind of a glassine in them, so it was like, "Oh, hello! Why didn't you think of that, Laura?" So, so I'm just gonna trim the plastic out. I can peel it out without tearing the paper too bad. Then I can just put some glassine behind it. So, note to self, when you are using envelopes with plastic windows in them, make sure you don't use your heat tool and you just let it air dry. If I had another envelope like that one, I would just replace that on there, but I don't. So we're just going to do this surgery, surgical action here. It's going to add character. Think of it that way. have one little spot still. Okay. Well, that was exciting. Okay, do I have all the plastic off to where I can now dry this? <laughs> okay, so all the plastic's off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use, to make it clear again, I'm gonna put some Duralar behind there. And Duralar is, an, it looks just like acetate, just like any of the acetate we've ever used on windows, that sort of thing. No, I like to get crinkles, it's even better. Um, which is kind of like why I like doing the painting stuff. Well, it's it's not um, they're the ones that I seem to like. They have kind of a glassine. It's not it's not super, but it's not super. This one's plat more plasticky than. You yeah, see, these aren't as plasticky. They feel they don't necessarily feel glassine, but they're not as. They have a different texture. This one was just like super plastic, super thin plastic. So I'll just, on the future ones, or the other ones, 
um, I'll just let them hand dry. All right, so then I'm going to add something along the top to reclose that because I just needed to surgically open it up to be able to get all the plastic out. So I got the plastic out. So let me grab some Duralar. So Duralar, I know they have Duralar at, at Hobby Lobby, but they also have it. Um, Blick um, Arts has it, as does Amazon. And Duralar is a polyester film, but, excuse me, it, um, it takes heat. It's heat resistant. Um, so it's one of the few clear acetates that can be around some heat. So, um, cause I wanted to keep that a window. So I'm just going to cut a piece that will fit. Those who've been around for a while are looking at me going, she's not measuring anything. She just cuts now. Who is she? <laughs> I'm just trying to loosen it up a little bit, not be quite so. All right, because then it can take the um, it can take the heat by having it being. You know, I'm actually because I have to do this edge. I'm going to actually open up this edge too. And then I can add on to them. I can just close it up then from there. So it'll be much easier to put this on. See, there's a little bit of plastic still in there. This has been major surgery. This is not what you really thought. Oh, I'm going to go watch Laura do major surgery on envelope for my National Scrapbook Day viewing pleasure. <laughs> so. ah. Yeah, just, you know, if there's a window, just let it dry. Pure and simple, easy response. Yeah, like I said, I've used windowed envelopes multiple times, but I've never had it melt quite as quick and easily as that just did. That was pretty rapid. All right, so put a little glue on there. Don't get too close to the edge of the windows with your glue. I don't know. That that kind of used and abused look of paper it looks like it's been been through things. I don't mind that look at all. I like it crumpled and wrinkled and looks like it's had a lifetime. Dr. Laura, scrapbook surgeon. Yeah, that's about it. All right. See, so I got my clear back in there. I got my glass back in there. And this is heat resistant stuff. So I can be gently using some heat a heat tool so um but i like the touch of blue with the touch of brown to give it that kind of vintagey look i'll probably add a little bit more blue onto it in fact let's do that and get it dry and then i can close up the edges um so okay anyway back to where we were 
I want it to be a little bit more of the blue again. Oops. Everybody always has such these messy, um, you know, when I watch on YouTube videos or something, everybody has these really messy looking um, watercolor um, tubs. I don't know. I'm just, I like my nice and tidy and the colors separated. I have a hard time letting them mush together. And I'm not mixing it on the edge, but when the little cups are not the true color, it bugs me. <laughs> so. All right, so then I wanted to add a little bit more. Just water the boo-boo down of this brown because I don't want a lot of it. I just kind of want to go around. window as I think I was saying when all this went down is um, also it doesn't really the paint doesn't really stick to the plastic of the windows so that you can then probably should have let that glue dry too so now I can do this without it curling up into oblivion It's a lo long delay, Pam. I also don't look up as often. That's the one thing, trying to keep a constant patter of chatter going when you're also into that other side of your brain sometimes can be a real challenge. <laughs> All right, so that this one I am going to use that one that I was originally going to use. This one's kind of a vintagey looking one, um, and I'm going to use it to attach my pages back together or my pocket back together, my envelope pocket. So this is um, the shiny side of uh, freezer paper, so I can just set those on there and they won't stick permanently. Um, if there's a long delay, I apologize, but yes, I think it's like Joyce says, there are a ton of people on YouTube today. All right, so there, we've got that to where now this is a pocket again. It's still not quite dry, so let's get a little dry. Keep your, your tool moving fast whenever it's over something like this, though. Made, I think that made that pocket all the cuter because I like the, the paint on it um, because putting pattern paper going around these windows would have been a pain in the butt. Now I can put some pattern paper on the back side of here um, and it's no big deal. So um, but let's see. I think I kind of want to do all of this here. 
first. I think I think I'm gonna do the same sort of thing because I like how putting the water and what it does to this stuff on here is I'm, I'm gonna put some of the color on here and then I'll be able to also embellish some some more on there. So I'm gonna stick with my kind of going with the. Uh, Now these are a little Prima watercolor um, things. This is the past vintage pastels, and this is the um, the complexion. Um, and the main one I like is the classics, but these are just a really nice size, and they're not super pricey. But it, it's just, you know, for stuff like this, it's easy to get out. This vintage pastels is pretty much the color palette of what the paper that I'm using is. And don't think about it too much, just plop it on there. Now, one of the things we are also going to be doing this summer is I will be having a color class where we're going to be mixing colors and stuff. Um, it's going to be more on literally about the mechanics of color, but I'm going to try to do it in a fun, not super technical type of way. Um, if you recall my very, 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 very first live stream back in 2010, was about color, um, and I, so I think after all these years, it's a good one to go back to, um, but we're gonna be doing it, and you can mix with either watercolors or acrylics. Um, I will be doing both. It's gonna be a, a pre-recorded video series. Um, it'll be part of my day camp stuff. Um, so, uh, <coughs> But that will be coming up. That's going to be one of the first um, day camps that I do. And that will be a week long where there's videos released each day. You'll have access to the videos, you know, till the end of time kind of thing. Um, yeah, see, I like how that, that came out. It just gives it the aging, but not so, it's not like with the sponge or the, 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 applicator tool so this is just some some um, a book paper that has some um, stencil stuff on it so i think i kind of like how that see one of the things i like is see this ink with the water on there it kind of ran and kind of gave it some cool textury type stuff so Now this is where I can put this on with matte medium or I can put it on like I am with this the glue stick. And then the paper. 
cursor. Something small, quick, and easy that I can pop, cut out. And I've done, I printed these on mixed media paper. Now, when I'm tearing, if I want there to be a white edge showing, so if this is a piece I'm keeping, if I want that white edge to show, I tear the discard paper, keep it on top. If I want there to not be that little white edge on there, if I want it more like this, the piece I'm keeping, I tear it on top. So here I tore, this is with the, piece I'm keeping. Whichever one's on top doesn't have the white edge. So on this, this one was on top here. This one was on top here. This was on top here. And this was on top here. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm off camera. So, but see how this goes where there's no white edge. There's a white edge, no white edge, white edge. Where there's no white edge, this piece was on top. Where there's a white edge, this one was on top. So if you want the white edge that you can ink, then um, the part you want to keep um, is on the bottom. If you don't want the edge, the part you want to keep is on the top. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, so for instance, I want to keep, this is what I'm keeping, but I don't want a, an edge on there, a white edge. So I tear it with the part that I don't want the edge on, on top. And this one, I do want an edge along the bottom, so I'm just going to tear it like that. So then that has that edge on it. So I just get a little I'll dry it first, or the glue's not gonna stick. Now, if you're using glue stick, make sure you're getting one that is a permanent glue stick so that it doesn't like come off or again, you, I can use matte medium. I could attach this down with matte medium or even like I'm doing right now, some glue. Just buckles a little bit less when you're using um, the glue stick versus glue. <coughs> I even have a little bit of an edge there so I can pop something.
So I just cut a little tiny piece of pattern paper. Curled it up a little bit, and then I can add some ink onto it too. So. Yeah, see, so I like how that. Look how my lighting just looks. I'm in such nice light right now, so I'm just, it, I hate the, how it looks so terrible, but see, just, and that just looks like I've scribbled on that, and it's just the paper, so, I mean, I've really not had to, uh, I didn't have to draw, <laughs> so, there's, you know, there's commercial papers out there, um, you know, not just digital, you can buy papers that look much more hand painted kind of look to it or you can you can use you know actual little printed ones it just depends on what style that you're looking for for wanting to do with this so okay I think I'm going to take this string off and put something else in there so I'll save the string because you know we're all now orders wanting to keep everything um and this is a kind of that a shiny finish on it. So you want like that. And there, so this one I will cut. Big as that circle thingy on there, so I know to grab the right size. I figured it was five eighths. That work. Deeper. There, that fits right around there perfectly. I like how that's going to look. I do want to add some color up there. Uh, that one I can't close up yet because it'll splatter wet watercolor everywhere so Uh, just throwing a little pink on that top. Wipe it off the reinforcer a little bit.
actually, I think rather I'm going to use braid burlap rather than the um, vintage photo. The vintage photo for this this palette is a little orangey, so. When it's heavier, like scrapbook paper and stuff, then I, I think I glue. It's the lighter stuff that I don't like to glue that I use a glue stick for, because otherwise it crumples it, wrinkles it really, really bad. So this gives a cute little journaling spot. Um, one of the things I also encourage everybody to do is make some handmade marks. I remember way back, way back, way, way, way back when I was the semester that I decided I didn't want to do architecture and I was going to be an art major. I just remember my uh, drawing teacher going on and on about marks, making marks. Now this is the um, a Signo Uniball um, in the black. This is one of my favorites. And there's also a Sharpie S gel. This one's a little finer point on it. I absolutely love it too. Um, and these are the two, the Uniball in the white is, is like my go-to. But what I like about these is they'll kind of mark almost on anything. Now this gel one, the Sharpie gel one, I thought it was just like every other Sharpie and it was permanent and I could just go over it with water. Um, um, no, it's got a water-based ink in there. It's not a permanent ink. I'm not real sure about the Uniball one, but I like just having that kind of hand look on something. See, the, this one, this Uniball, I've just found these in black, and these are kind of fat. Um, so that's a good thing to, to remember. Uh, but I want to I want to test something real quick. Let's put the Uniball in there. Let's see with the Sharpie and the gel. Get those. We'll put them dry. Take a little wet. See how this one will smear? And if you know what they'll do in advance, it's like, okay, if that one smears, I can use that to my advantage sometimes. Okay, so the Uniball one is permanent ink. So it didn't smear, but the, the um, Sharpie gel pen did. So, but that's good to know for the future because then it's like, okay. If I know it smears and I want that effect, great, I'll use that one. If I don't want it to smear, I can use the other one. Um, Cause I got, got completely caught off guard <laughs> when that one smeared and I wasn't expecting it. So, okay, so let's do the back side of this. See, this is where it's like, this was a piece just of um, an old, you know, the paperback books that I've been using and, or old books. And this was just to cleaning off my, um, my gel plate and I just do it onto there. So it just, it's nothing super special, but it's great for layering type things. And so I can use that um, since I have that in, you know, we all tend to do a palette that we like. 
that if you know, you know, you, you, you get to know yourself and you know that you use um, colors that are favorites. You frequently use those. So um, a lot of times you will have colors in your, your box of stuff to use that um, will work on multiple projects because you tend to lean towards those colors frequently. Yeah. I like using the, the actual book paper just because it's got a texture to it that's different. So. Pull my pink back out again. I'm just going to make some dots. Got make them super uniform. My theory is when you think you need one more, stop it. <laughs> See, and this would be a cute little place where we can add a little quote or something like that. I like using quotes. So this is a thing where that I can add onto this, this little piece there. So all I did here is I just... Um, collaged on a little piece and then just took some acrylic paint and added some dots. We could um, stamp on it. We could add some um, um, other collage stuff on there. For instance, on this sheet, I have some little stamps. I can actually pull the actual postage stamps out. These are from my childhood stamp collection. Let's put a little bit of. So now I have a little basket that's got goodies in it. And I can use on the screen. One evening when I'm sitting watching TV or something, I have to untangle this mess. Where's the But see how this is great for using up the, those little bits and pieces of just about everything that you have laying around that you now will never want to throw away ever. But it's all bits and pieces. And that's the beauty of junk journals. 
is it can be little bits and pieces of stuff that you already have. I don't know how many of you remember the um, the Strike a Pose album from years and years and years ago that I did it all with stuff that I found around the house. That was before I even knew what a junk journal was. Um, that I had used stuff from all over the house and it had all sorts of pictures of my daughter in it. So here, so I've just added a little green on there that kind of goes with that side as well. So that little tag thingy is done. This is done. Now we can do this little guy and we can put, you know, something. I, I might even make it tall enough to where it kind of hangs out a little bit because I've got plenty of room for it to hang out. Um, this is where having, let's see, that folds over. Let's see, we can find something in here. Oh, I like the map. Okay. Door the Explorer going the map, the map, the map just jumped out into my head. That's frightening. I haven't heard Door the Explorer in about a million years, so. Okay. So just texted me something. Just like I gotta look. I told you it was in here. No. All right. So what did I determine that could be? So it's got like two inches. So if I make it, okay. So if I make it about half this width, oh my goodness, she hasn't even gotten out her. She hasn't measured anything. Y'all ready to faint? to go inside of there or to hang out a little bit there's a grid on here so I'm not that good at cutting so this is going to just slip inside here like so so I'll be able to pull it out and then I'll be able to do something on this side. But this is too stark white for me. So I want to. Um, I could either put some something on the back. Or I can just take my paint again. The other thing that works really good for doing. Oh, that's way more orange than I want. To water that down. Um. The other thing you can use too, if you don't have watercolors, you can water down your um, acrylics for one thing. But another real cool thing to do is have you buy the coffee in the uh, that's already made as coffee. I know Starbucks has it. I'm sure. Whoops, I don't want that orange. Um, but I'm sure others have the coffee. Um, like Dunkin' Donuts or whatever they have in your your neck of the woods. Um, uh, and you so you can coffee dye. It's really easy. <laughs> so you can just have a little little cup of that sitting. Just don't drink it after you have dipped your brush in it. So. Hey, Betty. 
Betty is, what did you, we figure your second, my husband's second cousin, her grandfather is my mother-in-law's, is the brother of my mother-in-law's mother. Isn't that, I think that's what, so my husband's grandmother is sister to her grandfather. That's too hard for me to process. <laughs> so that's going to just go into that little, but we see doing that on the back, then I can do um, journaling on the inside and it's not so stark white. And I can have this little tab on here to pull it out. And then I can use my stuff to sharpen it up. See that little now what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take this this one out because I don't like that orange, so I'm just moving it. I'm just this is your desk starts to take over after a while. I want some green on the back of this. These um, pastel ones ha are a little bit, have more of an opaque feel to them than some of the other watercolor. They're not as, um, where's my camera? See, they're a little bit more opaque because they've got some pig, white pigment in them to pastel them down. Hey, my cast iron fingers can only go so far. <coughs> This is just a Jelly Rider in fluorescent pink, and I'm just doing some stitching lines on there. So that little taggy, you know, I totally get into doing all these little foofy details. I know to some people they're kind of like, oh my goodness. But I love all these little details. That's where I, this is where it's mesmerizing and fun. So I'm not one who's the fastest to get everything done. 
some people just like to work or are able to work really fast. I'm slower. I just like having the the little details things going on. So, so there's see it's got that whoops that little tab thingy in there. So to be able to pull it out. And that's gonna fit down in there like so. It's this also has a pocket on the back. So I'm gonna grab a little tab. I'll fit it. So that's a little tag that'll fit in there. Let's see. Eh. I'm just going to tie it in a bow for right now. I might change my mind to take it out. I like the shipping tags with the, the string on them. All right, so then, so we're getting there. I'm not, the, as I said, I'm not the speediest, but I enjoy the detailing. So, and then we're going to put it, something inside of there. All right, so I just tied this, now I'm going to take this off. So I'm going to entirely cover this with this piece right here. So I'm going to draw the circle so I know where the center is. And that this, I'm going to punch this first, and then we'll trace it on there. Okay, so I have to turn the white off. So I'm centering this, my 5 8 inch, over that hole that I just drew so that then I can place this in this spot that it needs to be. So I line that up exactly, and then I can flip this over and trace around it so I know where to cut it. So I trace around it. I'm going to cut it a little bit large just in case because I can always trim it off. I'm going to put this on the shinier side. So then it looks like I've drawn something on there when it's just my, paper, my pattern paper that I've already drawn it for you. So, you know, it just, your, your paper choices can make it, make you, you can fake it a lot better. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, I, you know, there are times where I, I just hope when I'm showing you this stuff and is just that you're learning something about the detailing or from my detailing about, you know, giving you some sparking some ideas of things that you can do yourself. I would say the biggest thing that I want to see um, in the future is I'd love to see like, one of these projects. I'd love to see what you guys do with it. That's the one thing I would say I wish we did more of on like paper doodles is that more people posted um, what they're working on. You know, if you're doing one of these, you know, you could even do this. You could do an envelope, just one signature if you wanted to and turn it into um let me show you a thing that you could do. You could do this with two. Uh, I'll do it with one orange and one white so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so you could have, let's say, I'm going to have the orange one be um, my signature. So it's got this. And this is going to attach on to the back. So this will attach onto the back of this one. 
And so these pages here will be all in here. Here's my pocket. But what you can do too is you could potentially have it being where then it attaches there. And then it's like it has a back on it. So if I took them and nested them this way, because then you could put a cover on it. You can even cut it to this shape or it can be rectangular. This can act as a cover or this could be the front and you could put a back on there. But by nesting them that way, you get two pockets, two faces. You know, you have a pocket back here, but you can have all of this part. So let's grab the guts for this one. So the guts could just be in there. If you didn't want to make the commitment of having three of them, but just one of them. So you could have all the guts inside here. Here's a pocket and a pocket. And back over here, this is a pocket. And then this could be a plain page. This can attach to your back and be a pocket. And this could still be your cover or vice versa. This could be your back with the pocket. And this would be my cover attached. See, now I put the th this at the front and have my like a chipboard cover on it. So then there's a pocket. So then this is like the inner page and then all of this stuff is inside. So if you wanted to just make one signature to kind of try it out to play with and not necessarily three. I also did a lot of layers in here. You could just do two or three layers. You don't have to do six. I just, you know, those of you who've been around me for long enough know that um, I'm more about doing more rather than less. <laughs> and if you get too much on there. Dab it off a little bit. See, I'm not doing anything super complicated um, other than, you know, adding a little watercolor to the back. So it's not, you can, you can do the same thing with sprays or with your distress or something like that. I just, you know, have the watercolor out and just add it onto there. So I can just pop that in there like so. I'm into, you know, drawing little black lines that aren't perfect because I love I just I don't know just I love it so maybe I'll just do some hash marks and a dot a couple of dots not all the way across let's see just adding some little those are me you know those are parts of me by putting that little bit of yourself in there <laughs> nothing uh too fancy. Come on, dry. <laughs> okay, so what do we want to put in there? Maybe I can pull some more of this. Remember, I use this little bit of pink right here. I like it right there. Okay. No, she's not got a tool out, her cutting tool. She's not measured anything. She's just whack and wave. It's not perfect. It adds to the charm.
But this summer, with the summer camp classes that we've got coming up, um, I think it's going to be fun, and we will um, get everybody posting stuff. So put that on there. But like the summer camps, there'll be a week long of vid you know videos releasing each day. So the videos are you, you're not waiting around for me getting hung up on stuff because the videos will be done before I put it up. So you have all the videos, and then there will be one live private live session for the people involved in that class. There'll be one live session to where you can ask questions, that kind of thing. Um, Potentially, I might think about doing a Zoom. I have to look more into Zoom and how that all works in terms of cost and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, there, see, that makes a cute little front to the pocket. Now we just have the envelope. So, let's pull these little tag thingies out. So, now we just have the envelope itself. And we have this gummy sticky stuff here that we'll want to. Okay, so. and I'm just going to trace the outline of the flap because I want to cut it a little bit inside of that. And I'm just covering on the flap. I'm not taking it down inside, which I should have done. Maybe I still will. We'll save that for something else. Anybody want a cute, noisy dog? <laughs> there, so I'm just going to set that down inside of there. Maybe round this off just a squidgle. marks off. And I'm not going to be folding this flap again, so I don't have to make sure there's a fold in here. I'm just sticking it in there and it's because I've got a tag in there that's tall. So it'll just make it to where this is like permanently not flapping down. So now we can do something on here. Have some washi tape out here. I'm 
Mm -hmm. Let's see. What I have. So I just cut out some circles. See, so even though I'm doing this for me quickly and loosely, it's still not, there's some artists out there that it's like, I, I wish I could be that loose, but I like the detail stuff too much. So it's not that I want it to be perfect. I'm just more into those fussy little details. Now this one has a little line going across it. So I'm going to keep it back to the back because I'm going to do something with that. So just little some guys. I'm gonna just take and I'm gonna circle around them. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't like drawing on the washi tape and then do it on the other. So and then I've got this guy. So I'm just making it like that has come off. That one was too skinny for that. So now I see how good at tracing I am. Making it look like I was intentionally doing that. So I just incorporated that that thing that was going across that one into a mark on there. So then I can also take my white pen. World's greatest, the Uniball Signo. Uniball in white is the world's greatest pen ever. Because it kind of will mark on anything. <laughs> And I just love little white details. <laughs> so that is, you know, only paper I used were those three little dots and some washi tape and then just some marks on there, but it incorporates the whole thing. So it's not, you don't have to cover everything in its entirety. And I can put my little guy in there. And since I have those little pink things there, I'm going to do the pink things right here too. The pink stitching. Ties it all together. I have these, these fluorescent color ones. I just have them in three colors. I've got it in hot green, hot pink, hot red. And they just add the little snaps, a little snap of the color. See how it just adds that little snap of the pink? And it ties in with the pink here and there. Okay, I just want to make sure my ink is dry before I flip the page.
I'll just show you my treasures from from uh, Portland. My uh, we went into some antique stores and I got some vintage books. So before this is over, don't don't let me forget. I'll show you my little my book treasures. So. All right, so then we just need to do this guy back here. I like the washi tape thing. I have this kind of greenish one out here already that I had from the paperback books ones, which is why I had the other out, the black one too. But it's got some polka dots on it, just like the pattern paper I put on the front of that little pocket has. Okay, so I've got that little green on there. And then I'm taking some of this pink. And I'm just going to tear it in half-ish. Don't want it to be perfect. Just run that right on to the edge of the other one. And so just a couple of strips of washi tape, and that's added that to that, because it's going to get covered over, too, by a, by a, um, the little tags sitting in there. But you don't want it to be naked. I think this one will probably be right on here better. And I think I'll go on this pink. So I'm wanting to go on each side of this pool. Doing a couple of dashes and some dots with the white. I just love letting it's just those little fussy details that that I like on there. So this one goes. Inside there, this one, Let's see what we got in terms of fun stuff. That one's kind of cute. See the little hand, I think I like the little hand dive.
This is just some little hand dyed fabric strips. Okay, so then we're going to take in this. We're going to leave it long enough to tie and we'll wrap it around. So you now all of those yarns and fibers and cords and stuff. Because what, you know, I'm thinking too is like with some of these summer things and stuff, and especially with mixed media, and I, you know, I'm kind of, I just can't um, do kids <laughs> anymore. I'm just kind of burnt out on the kids. I think that's what's done it. And, you know, the ones I still have to finish up to get, you know, the finish up the project and get those kids out to people. I still have those. I'm fully aware. Um, and uh, so I, I just, until all that's done, I can't even think about kids. But what I may have available because it, it doesn't take up tons of time is what I might start having available is I'll have all my digital stuff, but I'm also thinking of having just some ephemera packs is having some of the fibers and I've got a bunch of hand dyed fabrics. I can always hand dye more, especially with summer coming. And I, so I can do, you know, hand dyed strip pieces. Um, I can also do packs, paper packs and stuff to where you're not having to buy a 30 by 40 inch sheet of papers like these. Um, you know, I cut them down into different sizes and have some of the vintage book papers in there and maybe even some of the, the echo dyed. And so I may be just putting together some um, ephemera packs for things like, you know, fibers and fabrics and then um, paper sets and stuff and I make up 12 and I don't put them up until they're all packaged up and ready to go you know people order them I slap the label on them and they're out the door um, you know it's just I just as long as I stay in front of it and not behind it we're good so um, that may be something I have coming up um, then in the future so this is this is coming up not at all what I was expecting, but I love it just the same. So, um, but just, you know, just go with each little piece. So now we're ready to go to this one where we're going to have something inside. Maybe stick with this same, same um, paper. So it all ties in together. This width. I can go a little bit wider than that. Maybe I go with this floral. I'm going to cut this bottom strip off. Again, I haven't got my cutter out yet. Aren't you proud of me? Hi, Darlene. We're glad to see you. See, I want that peachy part sticking out. So I'm going to cut approximately along there. I mean, this is not having to be perfect. If I wanted it perfect, I could. I'm eyeballing completely. It's just not super smart. I should at least kind of give it some fold type action. <laughs> And I'm going to have a, some backing on here, so. See, and I don't mind, that's sticking out. It's not going to hang out beyond this edge. So I'm good with that. I like it. 
And I like how it's peeking out through the window there. Okay. So I can either keep it, and let's see if it can go a little bit narrower. I can keep it kind of really rough cut the way that I have here, or I can also tear the edges. I think I'm going to keep it um, kind of the rough cut thing. Um, where I have my extra pieces of, excuse me, as I reach across here. Reach it from there, it's behind the computer. Let's see if this one's big enough, otherwise I'll use one of these others. I see it's not quite big enough. So I use this. That'll work. I'm just cutting it, but I need to trim it down just a squidgel so that I have some. All right. So this thing can be. That wide ish. Let me come over a little bit. Because this isn't, or this, let's see how wide that is. So three and seven eighths. So I'm going to just do it. Um, I'm going to measure, but I'm going to tear, but I want it parallel to this. Because that edge is not square, so. I kind of like that top edge not being square, so I'm going to keep that and just trim this here at the bottom. Give that, that backing to it. But I want to do something about the kind of the top. I'm gonna, I might end up putting something on the bottom. But I like how that looks. It's that little roughness to it. No, she has not overcome her dislike of stripes. She likes that, so. Since you mentioned stripes. Except I wouldn't consider the stripes. This is a really cool paper. This is actually fatigued paper. This is a stamp that's done in a wax and then it's the paper's dyed black and then they rinse the, the, the wax away. It's really cool stuff. It's, it's just like, but it, it's a similar method to what they use for but the fatigue paper or pa uh, fabrics that I use a lot of.
Oh, I ran over half an hour, didn't I? It's six o'clock and I was only doing 3.30 to 5.30. I probably should get, as soon as I get this tag done. Now I'm going to leave that open because I still don't know what I'm going to do on the back, but at least we've got this tag, this large tag done. And I will probably with some word type stuff, um, I'll probably put a quote on here. Maybe I'll have it to where the quote goes this way. So it, it shows up in the window. So, but I like how that little guy pokes his little eyeball out the window. But one of the things I don't like is I don't like this blue hashing in here. While this was open, I could have painted over that. And I still might, I might pull this washi off. And because I wouldn't mind the hatch being lighter. So if I just did a white wash over it, the hatching would kind of pull up this color. So that's probably what I'll end up doing is I'll go ahead and pull my washi tape off from this back side. Go ahead and whitewash that and then put it back down. And then the tag goes inside. But having this craft around the outside kind of ties in with um, that. So... And then I'll just figure out how I want the whole back to be. But um, but so we've got this. Hey, we got four pages done. How often do I get that done in a class time? So um, we'll just keep, keep on working on this. I'll probably work on it. We'll probably work on it then again next Friday. But I'll keep working on it. I'm planning to work on it tonight because I really want to get by the next class time, maybe get one of these signatures done. Um but these, these are lots of fun. So anyway, I hope you guys all have enjoyed um, the uh, low key class today of for National Scrapbook Day, keeping it just um, loosey goosey, nothing too structured, because that's kind of where I'm, <laughs> I'm capable of right now. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying, enjoying having that, um, lower pressure on myself, I guess is the best thing to, to phrase it is, um, letting myself loosen up and lighten up, but still be able to do all of the details. It doesn't have to, the biggest thing is it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be you. So, you know, make some mark with your own hand in a tool somehow, um, and throw a little paint on there if you want. Um, use here. I've you know here's my own digital papers. You can use other digital papers. You can use um, commercially printed papers. Look for ones that are much more um, look hand painted. You can also get the ones that are very vintagey looking. Um, just kind of depends on the theme of what you want to do. Um, but the biggest thing is just we're in this for enjoyment and relaxation and for ourselves. So do, do it for yourself and just have some fun with it. I think it's the biggest thing. Um, it's, it's done a lot for me personally doing these kinds of things. I know a lot of people love the 3D. We have the 3D coming up because this whole thing is going to fit into a, um, a suitcase for fairies. So this kind of has the fairy coloring to it, the fairy watery feel to it. Um, that's going to be kind of in the flavor of, and I'm going to be adding some, some details that are maybe like some die cut leaves type stuff, things like that, that are going to add to that kind of fairy type thing. I don't know if I'm going to necessarily put moss on it, maybe on the cover, but not necessarily in the pages. So, okay. Christine got a signature done. All righty, guys, I'm going to let you go. Hopefully, I will eventually figure out a way to have the two cameras. Um, the method that I've been looking at, there's just something about it that just keeps stopping me. Um, and so um, I'm still looking to see what I can figure out that works with this Chromebook. 
where I can have two cameras, but we'll get there until then, you know, you don't get to see me smiling at you. You just <laughs> get to talk to the hands and I, I hate that. So, um, but I do thank you for out of this really busy day. Saturdays are busy for most people anyway. Um, but there's a million and two people doing um, live streams on YouTube and other places um, today for National Scrapbook Day. So I appreciate you taking some time out of your day and joining me here in my studio. And I hope you enjoy this um, uh, revision to this old favorite. Um, when I went to look at look at it and I realized how many, it has almost a quarter of a million views. Um, I'm, I'm always flabbergasted at that. So um, let's see if in 10 years, this one has that many. So anyway, um, I appreciate all of you so much. I thank you all for joining me and we will see you next week. So love you bunches. Peace out. Bye for now.